Hey, before we get started with this episode with Brittany, um, I just wanted to let you all know that we have started a Patreon that you can join. You'll have exclusive access to new episodes up to a week before they're released to everyone else. And in the future, you might also get video episodes. All right. So here's the episode. Hey, another week, another show. We're back. It's Svelte Radio. Yay. Yay. Today we have a guest with us, Brittany, and uh, the regular hosts, of course. I'm Kevin. I run a site called Svelte School, and I'm involved in Svelte Society and a bit of in about Svelte Summit as well. Are, are, we, still, are, we, are we still doing intros? I'm I, not sure. I, I guess we are this week. <laughs> Okay, um, John, I uh, uh, do the work on Svelte Society stuff as well, and uh, we recently decided at work, uh, for sure, for sure, uh, that we are actually going to build out a project in Svelte Kit. So I'm pretty Ooh. excited about that because uh, I, I had nothing to do with it. I just wanted to let the engineers make their own decision, and they picked Svelte independently. That so. is exciting. Very exciting. Yes. yes. I'm Anthony. Um, I forgot what I do. Oh, no, I know. I'm the CTO of Bianc. That, that's why I'm, yes. And uh, I'm also a Svelte maintainer as well when I when I get the, the chance. Oh, nice. Very cool. And uh, I think intros are always nice to like put out there for people. So I'm Brittany Postma. I uh, work with Coding Cat Dev. I co-host the podcast Perfect.dev. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just yeah. a freelance designer who likes to teach on the side. Yeah. Nice. Welcome to uh, Svelte Radio. So, Thank you. So what's, uh, what's your background? Where are you coming from? So I have kind of an unconventional start to web development. Three years ago, I was a stay-at-home mom to three kids. I had three kids in three and a half years. And so they're very close together. They oh, wow. were very young. And I had an unfinished graphic design degree. And I had worked in restaurants and a teller in a bank vault before I had kids. So I really didn't have anything that I was like super excited about. And I was looking for things that I could do like while I was watching my kids, like just reading blog posts or things. And I stumbled along Free Code Camp and I started doing the uh, web development certificate. So HTML and CSS. And it really like sparked a joy in me, like doing that stuff. I loved, immediately loved doing it. And I played with MySpace in the past and done some like, what was that, BB code? But I had never really <laughs> like gotten fully into it or realized that I could make this a job. And then once I saw that free code camp stuff, I was like, this is it. I'm just going to dive in. So I did the web development certificate. And then everything I was reading was pointing me straight to React. They're like, do this framework. This is like the best, most popular framework out there. I'm like, okay. So I found a Udemy course on React from zero to mastery. Andre Nagoy put out this uh, complete React developer, zero to mastery. And so I did that course and I actually was the first one that completed it, which got me kind of recognized in that community. They have over 400,000 developers that are in the community and I'm a star mentor there now because of that React course. And we built a Gatsby blog at the end of that. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do my portfolio. I'm going to get my Gatsby blog going. I did that. And then I obviously listened to Syntax FM because if like everybody does in this yeah. <laughs> industry, I feel like. And Scott was all in on Svelte from the beginning. And I'm like, this excites me. Like, I love the sound of this. So I'm like, let me look at it. And so I looked at the Svelte docs and they're so well laid out and it was so easy to learn. I didn't need a video tutorial. I didn't need to go find some other blog post to learn how to do it. I'm like, I'm going to redo my Gatsby blog I just did and put it into Sapper. So I did find like the Sapper docs and go down that rabbit hole and redid my bdesign.dev portfolio in Sapper at the time. And I was also doing some advanced JavaScript courses because when I was doing the React stuff, I'm like, this, I dove into it too fast. This doesn't make sense. I couldn't tell what was JavaScript and what was React. 
So I'm like, I'm going to do some more like advanced JavaScript stuff, see if I can really learn JavaScript. And I was writing a bunch of notes and I'm like, I need kind of a digital garden or a place for me to store my notes. So I built another site called the consolelogs.com in Sapper as well. And I was in love with Spelt from that point on. I'm like, this is the easiest thing to work with. It doesn't feel like I'm adding a layer on top of like React, I feel like I'm writing JavaScript. Essentially, you are. But I, f I felt like I was writing vanilla HTML and CSS was felt, yeah. which is just what I really like loved. It's just, it was incredible. So I did all of that. And that was probably about two years ago now. And I found Coding Cat through Discord. I uh, He was looking for a designer to redesign his site, and he was moving it from WordPress to Next.js, which is still in React land, but yeah. um, we transferred that over to Next.js, and I told him, I was like, I will give you a discount on this design stuff if you let me just help you write the front end. I want to get into the code. So he gave me the deal and I started with him and then he's like, why don't you come on the podcast? So we do perfect.dev podcast and chill out. It's fun. Yeah. So that's kind of my background. Long, long story there. but no, That was. <laughs> no, I like good. it. As I, I picked up on uh, when you said um, people think that React is JavaScript. That's what the React community would have you think. But it's yeah. not, is it? Yeah, it's it's React, but it's so hard to tell. There's such a fine line with like what is JavaScript and what is React, and it, yeah. especially when you're new and you're kind of like almost nobody forced me into it by any means, but that kind of was the community you seem to be going that direction. So I'm like, absolutely, yeah. Well, that's yeah. where I'm gonna go. No, I think there's a there's a you know the the, the sort of the notion is that React and JavaScript will. Sorry, React is just JavaScript, but I, I just don't think it is. I don't buy that argument at all. I just, it's not. It's it's JSX, which is not, it doesn't run through a JavaScript compiler without and third party things. Does not look as good as Felt Markup. I was just, I say this no. every single time I write a conditional in React, I'm like, I cannot read this. And so yeah. in Spelt, you say, if this, do this, else this, do this. But in React, it looks like garbled. Garbly yeah. gook. Yeah, the, the worst yeah. part is think, when you think... when you add like when you have like five ternaries in one. Set. Well, yeah. you, sh yes. you probably shouldn't do that, but, but I think but still, <laughs> you probably should write if statements in JSX yeah, at yeah. that point. Well, the thing is, I think I think there's a, there's an uh, an encouragement to use ternaries because it makes it, it looks more like a template that way or like a, an element. Mm -hmm. But w one ternary is fine, but people don't ever stop there. It's always you know three or four, and they get bundled up. And one of my biggest problems with React is not so much React itself, but the the users of React. They're in, you know, they're they're sort of uh, I can't remember the word, but basically they're just straight into you know a million ternaries. I never even use <laughs> even regular JavaScript more than one ternary at once because it becomes unreadable very That's quickly. Hard. Yeah, it does. It's fine, hard to find like where you're at and what you're doing. I agree. Yeah, and, and you can't really do it with uh, Svelte. You just have no choice. You know, yeah, you've got to put a hash in it. Write your little if else statement. And I mean, but it's still, yeah. even if it's an if else statement, it's still concise and it's still exactly. readable. So I do. I really like that. And I, it's, yeah. Spelt has just enough sugar syntax that makes it magical and yet easy to read and fun to write. Yeah. We don't give you quite enough rope to hang yourself with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I think with Spelt Kit, we're just moving in the right direction. All the momentum felt like it was going to Next.js, and it still may a little bit. But I feel like I saw Sean posted a Twitter post maybe yesterday about how it seems like there's been a momentum shift with Spelt Kit coming out and what made that drive. I'm actually interested to hear. I'm going to interview all of y'all for a minute. <laughs> what y'all think about that momentum shift and like where that's coming from? Uh, I, I don't know. That's why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I noticed, you know, like obviously us at work picking Svelte and then that's talking with uh, random other people just as part of my normal uh, investing stuff. And uh, yeah, people are actually independently picking Svelte for, uh, for, you know, independent merits. Uh, and then obviously uh, Scott is rewriting his site from whatever he used to use uh, to Svelte, Svelte kit. And you, they were just talking about it nonstop in the Shop Talk Show slash um, oh. Syntax FM 
episode that was yesterday. Yeah. And I was just like, wow, this is like, I, I don't know. Like, you know, we, we started covering Svelte a year ago, like with, with Svelte Society. And obviously Svelte has been around for a bit longer than that. Svelte 3 at least. And mm-hmm. it's just, uh, sometimes these things change slowly and then they start changing a bit faster and, and you don't really see it until suddenly you're just like in the middle of it. Yeah. yeah. I think Scott had like a custom React app built and it was all client or well, server side before. I don't know how oh, yeah, he yeah. was doing that, but he did, it was he all did custom React. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not at the time. It wasn't like, I think when he rewrote it, it wasn't what it is now. It wasn't this like hybrid framework. We, we should uh, We should ask him tomorrow. We're having an, and doing a podcast with him tomorrow. So, oh, nice. Oh, yeah. So, if you have any questions for him, you can... that'll be <laughs> exciting to hear. I yeah. am like, I can't wait to see it. If he goes through with this full rewrite, I really want to see it. I'm excited for the new content oh. he's putting out too. He said there's another spelt uh, tutorial coming out this month too, which is awesome. I have to listen to the shop talk episode. I didn't uh, hear that one yet. I just heard the syntax one. Yeah, it was good. It was. I, I think Scott had to run away mid episode to to buy a house or something. Which oh was yeah, quite funny. he did. He yeah. bought a house. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so they they a, actually put in an offer on a house and it like fell through. The first one fell through, and so then uh, it's like the housing market is just crazy here right now. Yeah. So you have to do it like within a day. So he did. They bought a house like a few weeks ago, I think. Okay. It's good for them. Yeah. I'm pretty active in his Discord. If you're wondering, like, I do not know Scott personally. I just know from Discord. <laughs> Wait, is, you mean the Svelte Discord or there's a separate Discord? Um, For the Level Up Tutorials Discord. So he has a Discord for his uh, subscription tutorial service and just a member in that Discord. Yeah. I've, communities in general, I feel like have really driven me. I, because of that first zero to mastery one and becoming a star mentor there, I realized that by mentoring other people, I was actually learning myself. And so I really dove into communities with the pandemic because we couldn't go out. So I'm like, okay, so I'm going to find these communities where I can communicate with people who like the technologies I like, who do the things that I'm doing every day. And I've actually, my freelance business exploded over the last year because I found clients through Discord communities. Mm. So there's just a few that are like really good. This felt Discord is really good, obviously. Level up tutorials, learn, build, teach from James Quick, the Zero to Mastery community, Party Corgi. Oh, <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of them that just have What was the name really of those again? Great. So I can write them down? So... Learn, build, teach Learn, from James Q. Quick. Teach. Yep. I guess I should mention Space Jelly from Colby Fayok. Ooh, that's a cool name. Okay. <laughs> Level up tutorials, obviously. Yep. Obviously. <laughs> Party Corgi. That's... There's Chris Biscardi and uh, Jason Langsdorf's yeah, yeah. in there. There's a few in there. Um, and Zero to Mastery is Andre Nagoy's, but it is private. So you have to either own a Udemy course through him or yep. be a part of the academy for that one. And, uh, I mean, we have a coding cat. We have a Discord as well. We're still growing, but oh, that's something I guess I should mention is we do have new Next.js content. So he had a tutorial on Next.js 9 and he has got uh, a Next.js 10, I think, and maybe Next.js 11 with the way it's going course in the works. And I am working on a Svelte course as well and a Ooh, CSS responsive exciting. design workshop for nice coding cat so excited about all of that i hope those um those next yes courses are how to migrate to svelte kit <laughs> <laughs> i i will be sure to take his next js part of his <laughs> course and put it into my spelt course and be like so this is how we can take this and move this to spelt kit and you will be happier <laughs> <laughs> this is how you I like it remove I like half it. of your political uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 this is how you make your App smaller so, and faster. So what's what's codingcat.dev? Is it it's, it's sort of like a just courses? So it is what we say perfect web tutorials <laughs> is kind of the tagline for it, but it's more than tutorials. What we want from it is to be a community for people to go to for blog posts, tutorials in written and video format. So like full courses, we want there to be some kind of like forum where people can chat and whether that's going to be on discord or actually live on the site yet, it's probably going to move to discord, but we're not sure on that yet, but it's just a full system for people just to have a community to go to, to learn and kind of like the learn, build, teach community, but it's like 
perfect dot or uh, codingcat.dev to like learn your stuff, to talk to your friends, to ask questions, to get help. So anything that you need, really, that's kind of our goal with it. Yeah, that sounds great. Like I, yeah. I really resonate excited. resonate with the idea of that you, you said a bit earlier that you kind of when you mentor people you learn a lot. I do, yeah, yeah. I I, I feel I do as like well. like it definitely that has to be true for for the majority of people. I think. Yeah, there's a word I learned recently on the podcast. Prince Wilson came on, and it's pedagogy. So t- the uh, ability to teach, like that skill set is kind of what that word means. And I find that by teaching others, you're really like teaching yourself, or at least for me. And I think a lot of people would probably be that way too. But if you just help somebody understand something, you're really like finding a way to explain it to yourself. So I think that really helps. I I would like to understand uh, some mechanics because I think when someone is so uh, it's all in and involved, uh, they don't necessarily understand what it's like on a day-to-day basis. Um, so, you know, it, it seems like it, your your time allocation breaks down to uh, being an active member in communities, one. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, so you're sort of mentoring people in, as part of your, your time giving back to the, the community. And then three, you're actually freelancing to, I guess, make money. Um, yes. <laughs> What's the split? Like, <laughs> what are we talking here? Like, you know, is it 40 hours freelancing and then everything else is, you know, after hours or, you know, what, what are we talking here? <laughs> it is so hard to even like contemplate what I do day to day. And my husband asked me this stuff too. He's like, so what are your goals and how do you break down this time? And I'm so bad at time management. So because I have three kids in the house and it's summer right now, so they're not in school. Naturally, you have three young kids. <laughs> Naturally, it's a little different right now. When they're in school, I mean, next year, they'll actually all three be in school. So I will have a full eight-hour day to kind of work. But right now, it's really whatever I have time to do when I have time to do it. I usually take a dedicated three hours every day to do some form of work. And every day that could be different. I am working on a freelance course. I'm working on the Svelte course. I'm working on um, side work. So freelance work to make money, like you said, uh, we do the podcast. So depending on the day, it looks very different. And I used to write a lot. So I used to be active on dev.2 and write blog posts. And I actually had to cut that out because I don't necessarily enjoy writing. It helped me learn a lot when I was learning. But that was one of the things that I ended up having to drop because I just didn't have enough time in the day. So I do that dedicated three hours. And then after that, I will squeeze in like the community stuff I can do on my phone. So I'll like read through that while I'm doing other things, but it's whatever I can make time for. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it sounds like you're pretty good at time management because I also, <laughs> I mean, you also did free code camp and the, the react course, you know, when, wait, while you still had kids. So that's that's an achievement. I, a lot of a lot of um, like moms and working moms come to me and they, they ask me about like do single parents or, or do do working parents do this? And I don't really have that many examples to point them to, you know. Um, so it's one of those things. Yeah, definitely. I think Free Co Camp was a great resource for that because I would sit down with my laptop like in the playroom with the kids and I would just run through those little tutorials and they're almost like quizzes so you just sit there and play with that while they're doing something and that was maybe a couple hours a day and it took me six months I think to finish that certificate but and also with the Udemy courses they're cheap and you can get through them in like a sitting they're like 12 minutes long usually for a video so like you just watch it real quick and then as long as you're doing something to make sure that you're actually learning it so implementing it into the projects was kind of my problem going in. So it took me about a year to really like get started doing the projects. And that's when I really started learning. So what I'm hearing here is that you can multitask, which is something that I definitely can't do. (laughs) So uh, I think that's the main skill. Well, Well, I mean, I I guess if your children are in a room where they can't hurt themselves, (laughs) then yes, you can multitask. (laughs) 
<laughs> so just like a kind of a padded floor, padded ceilings. Kids can hurt themselves in anything. What about the laptop? That's surely dangerous, you know? I know you're holding <laughs> well, it, but... I, I, I was holding the laptop, but <laughs> I will say that this morning I sent the kids outside so I could get some stuff done inside. My son threw a broom like a spear and hit my youngest daughter in her forehead. Wow. So. Wow. Yeah, they can, it's kids not can hurt always themselves. great. <laughs> and you think you can turn your head and you cannot. So. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> They're fun. Now, now I'm scared of, of having kids. <laughs> <laughs> I scared you off. <laughs> Would you would you want them to uh, try coding at, at an early age? Actually, my oldest daughter, she is eight and a half right now, and she has done like the HTML section of Free Code Camp. I got her started on that, and so she has like started going through it, and she loves it. And I've got her in Figma too. That's what I use for all my design stuff, and so she's doing like little emoji looking things in Figma, and she loves it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah, and I think it's great. It's one of the things like that was surprising about the, the most recent Svelte Summit that people were actually introducing this as part of their syllabus. Um, I, I forget which government. Was, was it Norway? Norway, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. They're teaching, teaching it to kids, and uh, it's more accessible that way. <laughs> it is. It's really uh, it's, awesome. It's probably a good time to plug my friend's book here, actually. He wrote a book called Get Coding, and it was number one bestseller in the UK on Amazon for a while. Uh, okay, I think I he's released another that. one now, Get Coding 2, but it's designed exactly for this, like getting kids into coding at a very young age, as early as possible kind of thing, you know, as soon as they can read pretty much. Um, oh, guess good reviews. Awesome. Nice. They out. do some stuff at the school that my kids are at. So they have like a technology class once a week and they learn typing and then they're starting to do like little, um, I think it's like sketch. They do sketch junior at, uh, in that class. So... It's like you build with blocks if nobody knows what sketches. This makes me think we need like a, a kid's version of our tutorial, where it's like yeah, that would maybe be cool. it's more like more graphics and um, with simpler language, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to take a note. This is like my next idea now that I can add to my list of projects. Svelte, Svelte, Svelte my goal is uh, Svelte kids get them while they're young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, isn't, isn't that how all the all these like huge corporations think? They like get all the kids interested like with google for example <laughs> and all the chromebooks they 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 just flood the the high schools with chromebooks so everyone will know I how chromebooks works oh yeah and then all of the kids up. at our school have a chromebook See? especially last yeah. year with like virtual school for part of it yep they all had chromebooks and they're all going to use chromebooks when they when they graduate and go off to college now can probably. we make windows development better in general <laughs> so that they can use the chromebooks for coding <laughs> Yeah, well, I it's actually, know. I mean, a, a Chromebook, Chromebooks can run Linux now, right? So it, it should be good to go. Are Some they the Linux? Can, yeah, yeah, they can. Well, like Chromebooks are Linux, yeah, but they can also um, they can run Linux natively now. They can have like you can run Linux apps on them. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought they were Windows, and no, I know I run so. I run Windows, so I run into a lot of Windows issues and. <laughs> Like yeah. if we can just get like a Linux based system or something that works. WSL is not it. Yeah. Are no, you are no, you using <laughs> Windows? I do. Yeah. I use Windows primarily. I actually for the first time just sideloaded Ubuntu uh like last week and I like it, but like nothing works. Like my <laughs> Wi Fi driver didn't work on my laptop. Oh, that's a my classic audio one. doesn't work. So like was... yeah, I just I'm not a super big fan yet. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do. I mean, yeah, I have to say, I, mean, I use Ubuntu. I have done for like probably like 16 years now, nearly more than 16 years, I think. But you, what I tend to do is buy the right hardware. Um, so when I get a new that PC, I consider that I'm you know, buying something that, that supports Ubuntu, basically. Because yeah. a lot of these um, providers of video cards and Wi-Fi and stuff, they they don't reveal how those are made to the, to the driver, to the manufacturers. So no one can open source it, reverse engineer it and stuff. Oh, um, so okay. you, yeah, you have to be a, a bit more selective with hardware, but anything by Intel generally works. Uh, avoid Broadcom. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and that's what I saw. Everything I saw was Broadcom, but this was a Realtek yeah. Wi-Fi driver, and I could not get it to work. So I, yeah. I don't know. I gave up, and I just installed the Insiders Edition of Windows, and I'm running WSL <laughs> on the laptop, and everything seems to work on my desktop except for the audio. Yeah. Which is still I mean, the, who needs audio? The anyway? other fun thing you can, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you're a str like you do live content. <laughs> <laughs> the other fun thing you could try is um, Mike Nichols uh, now works for Git, Gitpod.io. We did a podcast on it. Oh, uh, yes, yeah. I love Gitpod. 
I do run can... that actually. Oh, cool. Okay. Because yeah. you can do yeah, I use right? that on my laptop. Um, the only thing that I've found is you have to like npm install every time you go into an instance of it. So it would just take me a while to get up oh. and running. I kind of wanted yeah. something that was just a lot faster to just swing to my laptop and be like, here, I can bring the same project. And yeah. I, I still I don't think... know what workflow I'm going to come up with, but. I feel like they have a they have a solution for that, like a workspaces thing that you can use. So that's um, definitely possible. But you have a chat to me on Twitter anyway. It's on Twitter, so you can uh, get yeah, the first really the first nice line guy. support there. <laughs> yeah, and they're uh, try, he's trying to talk the front end team into doing moving to Svelte, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I think they did move to Svelte already. Actually, just, just for the the, the marketing website. The yeah, ones, the marketing yeah. site. Yeah. But the uh, he wants the actual like application oh, to yeah. be rebuilt in it, right? <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, we know how it goes, right? I mean, he's he's, he's converted the one team. That team will then extol the virtues of Svelte, and, and <laughs> everyone will convert. <laughs> so, so this, I I kind of want to ask you, Sean, like how uh, how did they land on Svelte, your your team? Oh, oh um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you know it, it was just on the on the table, and we were open in terms of framework choice, and they were mostly looking in terms of the. The amount of features you get out of the box, the 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 lower amount of code, I guess, that you have to write um, just to uh, put everything together, and uh, I think that what m- most made people comfortable was that actually it's not that different from React. Like you still code in components, and uh, a lot of the knowledge is is still portable if you know your fundamentals well. And uh, yeah, I, I think we realized that like we weren't actually taking that much from the React ecosystem anyway. Um, and I think that's that's the point at which you you start to value things like you know the the inbuilt styling solutions, the inbuilt stake management, and the inbuilt animation stuff, right? Like mm-hmm. for, for me, one of the, the the key wow moments for us felt is the point where you switch a writable store into a motion store. It's the same yeah. exact API. You just you just change the the way you import things, and that's it. And now it's animated, and I think that opens up the opportunity for more play, because in in React it would be a total like in, pick from like five different libraries and and you know try to install this thing, yeah. and it would just be like extra JavaScript burden, and it, most people just not do it. <laughs> it takes away a lot of the overhead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so if you open up the, the the opportunity for play and progressive upgrade from like a, a simple MVP to like, all right, let's add some transitions, add some animations, um, it, it doesn't seem like that big of a lift. Um, I think Svelte also really sold the team um, because the team had worked in Ember in the past, and I had I had never worked in Ember, but they were like, yeah, this reminds me of some some stuff I, I'm familiar with. So that one's all that one's on them. <laughs> I don't know Ember at all. <laughs> well, that's that's nice to hear. It's always cool to, yeah. to to like hear people switch. To it from. is. I mean, you know, I don't necessarily advocate like people switch just for the sake of switching. You know, it's an expensive choice. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, uh, there there are genuine development improve uh, sort of experience improvements, and that can help you to build great user experiences, which is uh, what the end goal is, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's a good mix of both. It's a great developer experience with a great user experience on the end. So it's just it it brings both of them together. Uh, I'll say I'll say the one thing that I'm a little bit worried about is that we are we are in sort of the honeymoon phase with Salt. Mm-hmm. Um, we haven't run into like the the big like disagreements or the big foot guns yet. So I'm going to you know tell the team about what I learned with um, the await syntax and so how right. basically Anthony <laughs> Anthony doesn't like the await syntax even though it's like a, a major part of Svelte because uh, at a lot of the times you want to use your own um, sort of state management for fetching data anyway. Um, so <laughs> the the await syntax is, is like a, a nice thing to to uh, put promises in, um, but at its, at the same time you you often want more control than that. Oh. For sure. You I don't actually, have to put it in the markup though, right? You can put it up in the script tag. Yeah. So you can use a regular await. Yeah. Um, and that's what I'd probably encourage people to use. So, uh, you know, since I since I did, actually said that on the podcast, I have started using await a little bit, um, but only on really trivial things. Um, it Because it, it's like those, um, it's like those, uh, it's like React, you know, it gives you too much flexibility to do something with. So if you start trying to do something complex with it, I think you probably run into trouble 
because it's not flexible enough to give you the control the control flow you need in order to do what you're trying to do with it. But if you're doing something quite simple or noddy, then it's absolutely fine and you can just build something really simple with it. Uh, it's convenient, but it really should be considered only as a convenience, in my mind at least. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, I was, I was wondering if we want to talk a bit about like mentoring. So I tell people like th there's a tendency when people are starting out to basically just like message you and say like, can you be my mentor? And uh, mm -hmm. I tell people not to do that um, because basically it's kind of an unspecified job that you're like an unpaid, unspecified with no set timeline. Like I, I, I try to tell people to focus on projects. Um, I, I'm just wondering what your general approach to mentoring is. What do people struggle with, uh, including when it comes to Svelte? I think that is one of the things that is a struggle with a community of 400,000 people. The actual Discord community has, I think it's like close to 200,000 or just over 200,000 now. And it's hard. 224,787 students. I was going to check that. Wow. It's how many are in the Discord community. And being a star mentor, my name appears at the top. And so I will get multiple messages a day that are like, either can you be my mentor? Can you be my programming buddy? Just like, hello, randomly, or just people will try to call me, which is not great. Oh, I yeah. want to leave my DMs open for people to be able to access me. But some of that stuff is really like put offish. And so I, I really take the mentor in that community, especially as being let me help you where and when I can. So if you have a question, put it in the right channel. And then I will in my free time, which is very little lately, <laughs> go in there and see if I can do something to help. Otherwise, mentoring can be if people need something specific that they know you have a niche skill set in and they need they have a specific question. I like that when they come to me and they're like, hey, I know you're really good at this. Can you help me to do this? So as long as like if you're going to ask people to mentor you, know either a timeline, be willing to pay them or have like just a specific question that you know they're good at. So I will also get questions. Those courses for ZTM like range from like data and machine learning to like react on the front end. So like they're all over the board and I will get like, can you help me with this blockchain thing? Or like, and I just, I don't know that. So I'm like, there's just be specific and make sure you know the person you're asking, I guess, when you ask for a mentor. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's a good tip actually. It's quite hard to really pick a mentor. So those are useful tips. Yeah, and uh, the Twitter community and Discord communities for development in general are great. And I have never had a bad experience. And as a woman in tech, I think that's pretty strong to say because I know a lot of people that have. So I've never had a bad experience. And I think that if you just put yourself out there a little bit and ask the right questions to the right people, then you'll find your answers or teach yourself to Google better. That's a big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you, you kind of you kind of run into these, uh, like s some people have a tendency to just, uh, like they just blurt out anything they they want to know into like a public Discord channel, and it's yeah. like one Google away from knowing the answer. <laughs> it just gets irritating. <laughs> that is frustrating for for, for those yes. of us that are are in the in the channels that see all the messages and stuff like that. Oh yeah, definitely. All right. So, do we have any any other questions? Or should we move on to unpopular opinions? Um, well, just like uh, I, I guess, uh, it's felt wish lists or uh, things you things you you wish that uh, we could build out in Svelte or or that was better documented. <laughs> yeah, uh, for Brittany. <laughs> oh, for me. I'm yeah. sorry. Uh, so I was just actually going to pull up the Svelte repository because I do have an issue that was out there and I haven't checked on it in a little while. I'm like I said, I run on Windows. So I did have a Windows issue with the pathing. And so as soon as that stuff like gets resolved, I think I'm hoping that y'all are getting close to being yeah. out of beta. <laughs> And that's really the only thing that I can say is that I had like the windows, the slashes were the wrong way. Hmm. Ah. Okay, so this is for Svelte Kit, not, not yes. Svelte itself. Yes, Svelte Kit, sorry, not hmm. Svelte itself. I don't have any issues with Svelte <laughs> that I know of that I've ran into yet. Okay. I've never used the await keyword in the market. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I got no issues. <laughs> I think, um, yeah, the, the pathing thing... Uh, 
not, I'm going to think now, there's probably like two, maybe three now maintainers that use Windows. So those issues are probably slower to get picked up. Um, yeah. But because the community is a lot larger now than it was, hopefully this will get fixed, if not by us, by, by someone else. Um, I actually know that Conjutri uh, and Ben McCann, I think Ben McCann flip-flops a bit, but they both have or do use Windows. Yep. So they'll they'll spot them. So that's, Ben that's tagged good... my uh, oh. my issue. And when cool. I checked the issues last, there were only three, and now there are 248 open. So maybe we're not as yeah. close as I thought. <laughs> yeah, we ran a They were all Windows did. issues that was left, and I was like, oh, we're getting close. <laughs> yeah, that was close. spicy. <laughs> <laughs> They're gone. Yeah, I mean, my, my personal solution is just don't use Windows. So that's simple as that. Right? But, uh, <laughs> I guess it's not quite, you know, it's not the, the optimum solution. For people. I'm, just, I'm trying so them. hard to wait on getting a Mac. Like, I don't, I don't want to get a Mac. I'm pushing. I'm like, not anti-Apple, but I just... Get a Linux. Get, get Ubuntu installed again and, and just change the <laughs> Wi-Fi card. Done. Change the hardware. <laughs> Yeah, well, some of it, not all of it, just some of it. <laughs> okay. It's weird. Like, we should, um, it's it's weird that we have to take care of these things. You know, I, I actually kind of blame it on Node. Uh, we need, like, a, a standard library that just works on, you know, someone to t- take care of that, and then we just use their interface to, to access file paths. And, yeah, uh, I think Node... Yeah. Node isn't really there with Windows, really. It's, it hasn't been for a long time. You know, Node is, is all about Unix and POSIX kind of standards and compliance. Mm. So, yeah. I was wondering who I should blame for it because I, I never blamed SvelteKit. I was like, this isn't SvelteKit's fault. So it's either V, Byte, how, how, how do we say that? Can it's that feet. be a hot take? It's V. So I said V, <laughs> and then they said Byte, and I'm like, no, I can't. So V, <laughs> I thought it might be V, but. Are you saying it's Node? Is that what's doing it under the hood? Like they it's, could it's provide a- uh, tool, better tooling to help us um, not make any issues. Like every single project that does that deals with the file system ends up dealing with this stuff, and okay. it's super annoying because like yeah. we could just resolve it in the runtime itself. I mean, uh, to be fair, to be fair to Node, it does have, for example, path.join. It's just that people are very prone to not using path.join. Path. I was join using will take that. Yeah, so it will take the segments of file of file names and it will join together with the correct slash for your system, right? Mm-hmm. Which which is great. The, the the problem is, of course, SvelteKit is generally bundled when you deploy to production, so those have to become either that way or that way when it's deployed. New lines have to be the same. Um, I think the other thing is people are just so prone to sticking some slashes and some words together or using concat or just a string concatenation, for example, so okay. they don't use those libraries that are given by Node. It's not that Node is, is perfect by any means, but Node certainly now has the support for Windows that it didn't have uh, in previous editions. It's just that whether authors use them or not, and there's always new nuances. Windows has loads of bugs with the file system around, like file naming. WSL doesn't work properly by watching files if you put your file system on a Windows drive versus a Linux partition. There's a million and one issues, and it's like browsers as well, right? The OSs aren't consistent, the browsers aren't consistent. If we're all using different things, we're gonna have to expect that it's down to the individual developers to actually make sure their platform complies to whatever standards are available. With Windows, that's not unfortunately. Windows is kind of a right of its own. So <laughs> I just found the issue and it says path.join on URLs uses backslashes on Windows. And I really? It, yeah. Oh, well, it uses so it is round circle node, you have to look node support that to be is broken. <laughs> no, node itself also can't do that properly. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah, this is why we should well, we should yeah. all, we should all we, use the like the the new WebAssembly OS thing from Spark. Was it Spark Blitz oh, yeah. or something? Stack Blitz. Stack Blitz. Oh, Stack Blitz. Yeah. Yes. No, you mentioned this yes. last time, and I, and I told yeah. you it doesn't work with local oh, files. Right. It's yeah. only virtual files. Well, everything so can be in, in virtual. Everything in the cloud. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Un- exactly. Unpopular oh. opinions. Unpopular opinions. Who has one? My favorite uh, bit. Who's going first? I think Brittany signed up to be first. <laughs> okay. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So my unpopular opinion is I want to be done with React. <laughs> I want to move away from Next.js and just write everything in SvelteKit. Do All my enough? client projects. Oh, yeah. Do you get enough freelancing projects to, that actually want uh, Svelte? Uh, I, I imagine you're doing a mix. I, well, I, I work with Alex, my partner on Coding Cat Dev on our projects right now. And so everything is Next.js. So it's probably going to be more dependent on him. But me personally, if I got a solo project, I would push SvelteKit 
like right out of the box, no doubt. That makes sense. Okay, Brittany's yeah. available for stock market. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. I, I'm. I always said if there is a job that I would take over just freelancing, it would have to be in Svelte, like, and it would have to be like front end work with CSS and design and Svelte, and yeah. that's where I want to go. <laughs> Oh, you know, this is something that we actually were concerned about, which is the ability to hire Svelte devs. The impression is that they're just a lot more reactives, and the impression is that it's easier to hire reactives. I'm not so sure that's true, uh, because maybe there's just a lot of people who would like to work with Svelte. Um, they just don't have the opportunity. Yeah. yeah I, just... I, th I think as well, like, I think we've said this before, but um, I, I think at least that you can definitely bring over a React developer to work in Svelte. Like, I don't think it's hard for them to, to do that. Yeah, it takes takes a day to learn the yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you can learn all the syntax that you need in under an hour, probably. Just if you have those underlying JavaScript concepts, you don't need a lot of the svelte, like, syntax. And yep. it would not take you long to learn that. Sweet. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, so, so, my unpopular opinion is that Chai, which is the popular assertion library for Node, is crap. And, and I'm, I'm putting it in those terms because I just really don't like it at all. I, nev I never have. Um, and the reason being that it allows you to very easily make false positives. So it has this trait of not uh, requiring a method call to be the last part of the assertion. So it's got this kind of word like assertion, expect blah to be a number, for example, or expect, expect something rather to be false. And it's, like, it's written like words. So if you, some of them have like a function calls and some of them are just statements. So if you accidentally don't call the function call on one of the statement on one of the function ones, if you just use it as a statement, your test will pass because it will never throw an exception. And for mm. me, for a test framework or test library to do that, to allow you to make that two character mistake that's just so easy because you don't you can't always remember which assertions do and which assertions don't use brackets, is is a massive fail. It makes it inappropriate for use as a test library. Um, so I really, really hate it. And I had a I had a developer once on my team who was, I, I like to use happy code, right? Uh, happy made a library called code. Um, it does the same thing, but it even says in the readme, it, it uses functions for everything because it guarantees consistency and it guarantees your tests are not going to, you know, false positive without you knowing about it. This developer denied all that, said, no, no, no way. No, chai is great. You're just using it wrong. You don't know what you're doing, blah, 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 blah. blah. And we battled for ages. And one day I was, I was the, the team lead. So I just said, look, I'm, I'm getting rid of the chai because we're not using two assertion libraries in here. I'm just going to switch it over. And it took me like five, 10 minutes because it's basically the same thing with brackets, right? Um, and when I did that, I found eight of his tests were false positives, right? Wow. So even this guy who was stalled saying, I'm the idiot. I can't develop software. I'm, I'm the idiot. It's my fault. He did it. He broke it, right? So it's, 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 <laughs> That just made me double down on my on my statement, my assertion that it's just a broken library. I just I just hate it. I despise it. <laughs> so um, I, I have one follow up question, which is uh, typically sure. when you write, you should write a failing test before you before you make it pass. If, yep. if uh, does it is it fine if you adopt that discipline? Is it about discipline more than it is about no. you know tests that degrade in quality over time? No, it's, well, it is. So, so, so it's not about discipline. Um, it's it's all fine and well doing TDD and writing tests first, and, and you definitely should. That's the way to develop software, right? But when you refactor, you don't have that. You don't have that possibility. So, if you change the way something works, uh, a bunch of tests fail, and you fix them, you change the assertions, and you just leave those uh, those brackets off your new assertions, you're screwed. Your tests are gonna. Oh, they passed now. That's fine. It's because the assertion is never called. So what do, use, what do you use instead? Uh, I use happy code. So it's, it was just called code before, but it's ah, called okay. at happy slash code now. So it's part of the happy family of stuff. And it's literally a library designed to only be chai without the flakiness, without the kind of random, you know, mm. syntax. That's great. All right. Do you have opinions on like Jest and Uvu as well? I haven't used Jest very much. Um, it's not well liked among the Svelte maintainers as far as I understand for a variety of reasons. Um, Uvu is great. Uh, I would actually love to switch to that. There's one outstanding issue I want to see fixed first, which is that the befores and uh, afters, if you throw in those, um, your tests will mysteriously just not run and you won't know why there's no feedback. So once that's fixed, I'll happily recommend that as uh, the way forward. But for now, I just use Mocha. All right, cool. That's a great rant. <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you, can, I ask, sure. can I ask about the TypeScript, Tate? 
Because I, I do not love TypeScript. I hate the way it looks. And I know that a lot of the maintainers don't use TypeScript either. Oh, uh, yeah, well, you were hiding your... Yeah. Un, that's an unpopular opinion. No, that is an, <laughs> I, I have two. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, we, ha we have a few that do use it and, and love it. Um, we actually have one of the TypeScript core team as a maintainer as well. So we can't really, you know, totally be against yeah. it, right? Um, and, it's, and it's definitely got its uses. I think the notion is that it's especially in front end, um, types are nice, but they do add a lot of, um, they slow you down a bit when you're trying to rapidly prototype things. And so there's not a huge favorability for it there. But I think I think it's it's kind of half and half now. Some use it a bit, some use it all the time, some don't use it at all. I don't use it at all. That's my problem with it, is that rapidly prototyping. So I do design and then I put it into the front end code. So I'm trying to yep. throw together a React component and it's yelling at me about types. And I'm like, I don't know how to write TypeScript. I can't write these types. <laughs> So I'll just put colon any and then yeah. stop yelling at me. <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is rant as well about TypeScript. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Uh, uh, do you have a do you have an unpopular opinion, Sean? Uh, no, I'm very I'm very uh, mellow today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Me too, as usual. I, I never have unpopular opinions. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a good pick though. And it's nice. uh, it's it's about chai. I love chai. Not the framework, chai tea. But, <laughs> Not the framework. but the tea. Yeah, <laughs> I had a, ch a chai latte the the other day, and it was mm, amazing. So I'm gonna pick that today. <laughs> oh, nice. I feel like we put that in just to trigger Anthony, and then he had to leave. So <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that transition. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I I was hoping I could do it while he was here, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool. Do I do I go? I guess. Um, yeah, I'll, go for it. Uh, I'll pick Superhuman, which is the email app that I use. Um, it is a luxury, so it is not one of those things that you need. Uh, it's basically an email client for Gmail. And why would you pay thirty dollars a month for extra email? And that's purely because it introduces a lot of keyboard shortcuts that help you manage your email better. I have I tried it. Out a, a while ago, and now I've hit 26 straight weeks of inbox zero, and uh, I think that's that's just like a it, it's a nominal thing. It's a, you know you can you can you can get to inbox zero by cheating a lot, but it definitely helps me feel more in control of my email for the first time in a long time, and anything that makes me read my want to read my email instead of want to avoid my email, uh, that I think that's worth paying for, um, and uh, I, I recommend it um, if you want to get um, off the wait list because there's there's a pretty long wait list uh, just email me um, uh, you know and, and uh, six at six .io, it's, it's on my site um, and uh, I can refer you but I generally I think it's great and I, I actually switch myself from like the monthly plan to the annual plan which seems like a step up but actually you get like a like a two month free discount so um, nice I guess I'm in this for the for the long run just because I it's such an ingrained thing, part of my workflow. I, I think yeah. you have to just get better at email as you go, you know, more into, <laughs> uh, I guess, company leadership or whatever you call it. And uh, you just get more email that's that you just cannot ignore. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if if you're if you're a if you're a, just a developer, it's probably way easier to just like ignore stuff that aren't really relevant to you, right? Yeah. Select yeah. all, delete. Well, yeah. Yeah. especially if you deal with like external customers. Um, and then if you're doing a lot of like investing with like startups or if you're doing talks with uh, conferences, th these are all like, you know, email is the ultimate the bridge between all of them. So definitely making sure, like, I, I feel like it's like my big boy pants moment, like, you know, trying to... <laughs> I'm like getting serious about email and actually getting excited about email tools. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's my life right now. Yeah. All right. So, so I'll go ahead with my pick. Um, mm -hmm. I actually thought of another one while we were sitting here too. So I'll go ahead and do the one that I had. Uh, it's called Black Monday. It's a show on Showtime about the second largest stock market crash um, other than the Great Depression that happened in the 80s. And it's a really cool show. It's kind of like just all that Wall Street, like business stuff. But then there's a lot of drama and side stories that I don't know, it's been pretty interesting. We binged the first season and over the weekend. So it's pretty good. And my second pick that I just came Oh, sorry, you want to ask? Something? Yeah, yeah, I was was gonna ask, like, how does it compare to that movie about the the the, the latest one? Wall Street? No, the uh. the 
The Big Short, I think it's called. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that one. I can't Ooh, compare it. If, if you like the, the Black Monday show, I'm just assuming here that they're kind of in the same genre. You they should definitely watch The Big Short. Definitely. Great, I'll check movie. that out. My question is yeah. my question is how can there be more than one season? Because like it happened. It yeah. happened <laughs> I wonder <laughs> the same thing. And then I'm like, oh wait, it's gonna keep going. And so it just kind of keeps going with their stories. And I I don't want to give any of the show away, but like it, it's good. It just kind of picks up from Black Monday. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, for me, it's kind of like prison break uh, because they break out of the prison oh, in right. season one. In season one, they're done with the prison break and then they have four more seasons to go. But are they? And you name the show like after what happens in season one. Yeah, it's yeah. the same thing. Well, was, so. wasn't that like the like the season five? They they broke into they, they, prison yeah, they broke to break in out because, again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, they do that oh. for three more seasons. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it's it's just really funny because like the, the, the writers are clearly like, okay, we have this title. Um, we, <laughs> what would you do with this? <laughs> what else do we call it? Yeah. Uh, All right. Sorry. Go ahead with your second. Oh, pick. no problem. Uh, yeah. So my other pick I came up with was Polywork. So I don't know if y'all have heard of it, but it's a new social network that is Twitter meets LinkedIn is the way they described it to me without the popularity contest. So it's not so much like high school. You can't see follower count, but you can follow people. And right now it's invite only. I have a few invite codes if you want to get in, Kevin. And um, it's basically you can like tag your posts with what you're working on. And then you can sort and filter to see people that are doing the same things as you are collaborating. Like it, it's just, it's a really cool idea and I'm hoping that it grows and they've now got a login functionality, which makes it way more usable for me. And hopefully an Android app is coming. So I'm looking forward huh? to that. All right. My problem with it is I have, so I've, I was invited uh, early on cause I signed up with Cassie Williams I cannot yeah. log in. I cannot log in. I, I don't know what it is. I think it's one of my apps. Your magic link didn't work? Uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah. It just redirects me to the landing page. Oh. And I, I've, I've reported this to them and they were like, we're, we're working on it. We know it's an issue. Uh, I don't know what it huh. is. It's just like a conflict with one of my extensions or whatever. Uh, so I just hmm. refuse to use it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried it since they've added the login yeah, yeah, authentication yeah. thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, and oh, that's oh. unfortunate. And yeah, that sucks. It's one of those things where like, uh, I think James Kyle from, from the Rome Tools team was like, there are two things that you need to test above all. One is billing to get money. And second is login. Yeah. If everything, if anything else can be broken in your app, and people will tolerate that. But if people cannot log in, they cannot use your app. So you must yeah. test building in off. I did not use it for the first like few weeks when it was just the magic link. I thought that was really like hard because you would be sent to your email and then you would have to drive back to the app, and it wasn't like I could go into the app and just post stuff like Twitter or whatever. But yeah, so that was unfortunate but now that it's got auth i can just log on so it's just like a web page you know there are a few startups that are predicated entirely on magic links they're like you don't need any passwords anymore and then there, i think there's, no. like a, there's a startup that got like something ridiculous like 400 million dollars in a series a funding to do this magic link thing and like really is it worth that much no <laughs> and i mean i oh, like I, the qr yeah, code piece of discord and I like not having to oh remember my, God. my password so for that. Convenient. You just like, yeah, do the, do the QR code. Like everyone should have that. I do that. I do like that. But I don't know if I could do away with just like the authentication system for things that I need to log into like immediately. Yeah. Is, is, there, a, is there a way to use like Discord as a single sign-on provider with like a QR code? I've never seen it. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. That would Probably be awesome. They should do it. Like OAuth? Yeah. For sign in with Discord. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. On everything. Yeah, they, they would just they would blow it away. Um, yeah, I, I mean, re- sure. relatedly, one of the the things that we did, we were designing our, our our off system at work, and we realized that actually it really helps the the company to do this correctly. So every like the company should have a relationship with you, the 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 user, independently of the company they happen to work at. So you think about Slack, right? Like every time you sign into a new Slack, they're like, "Who the hell are you? Please log in," and it's it's super annoying. And whereas Discord, yeah. you have one identity and you're immediately logged into all the discords that you're currently in. And this is something that I think, you know, when you think about the, the apps that you use for work, some of them make you use individual logins for every company or situation or team that you're on. And when you leave the team, when you leave the company, dead to them forever. Whereas others, like basically GitHub, 
have this ongoing relationship that with you as a person, and you have temporary associations with companies and organizations. So basically, what I what we realized was we want the GitHub model because we want our relationships with our users to survive any present employment that they have. And it's just it's just a big insight for me. I, I mean, it's, it sounds obvious when I say it, but like people do this badly, like Slack. It may sound obvious, <laughs> but it sounds like really what should happen. Like, yeah. I mean, you want, like, I hate when I log into a site and I can't remember which email I used. And so you're logging into like three different Gmails and it just creates yep. a new account for you. And so, oh, right, yeah. I, I can't stand that. So I, I agree. I want like one thing to live for my authentication on each site. And yeah. I, yeah, I don't know what I, the solution for that is, but that would be I, amazing. I, I know the solution. What? It's web often. I picked it last <laughs> week. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think it's the solution. No, it's, it's, a, it's about schema design, right? If you start with yeah. company first and then a person is a member of team, team is a member of company. Um, when a when person leaves the company, they're lost forever, right? Where if you start, with, whereas yeah. if you start with the person first, and then you associate them with a with a company, then you can keep that association for the rest of the person's relationship with with you. So I, I just it's a it's just a fundamental insight in schema design for off, which again I'm getting excited yeah. about this stuff, <laughs> uh, just because I'm in another company where, where we we hope to be with developers for a very long time. So uh, GitHub's off is is really great for B two B stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. I think I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, Brittany. Thank you um, so much for having me. I've been a fan for a long time. I've listened to all the episodes except for the two that I'm still catching up on, but I appreciate it. No, I appreciate awesome. you like, being Thank so you. active in, in uh, Svelte, in web dev, in showing a way for uh, you know, other people uh, of like non-traditional backgrounds, you know, I think we're we're uh, we're both from uh, I, you know I I don't know if you know but I also came out through Free Code Camp and um, oh no yeah we we, uh, we there, there's just so many people like us and I think we need to yeah. show that they can they can be uh, leaders in the community as well and mentors and successful yeah definitely all right cool see you all next time <laughs> yeah. bye see you later <laughs> thanks.